What's going on, everyone? Bloody gross eye from the quartering here. Hoping that you're doing well today. And as the coverage of this uh, reaches a fever pitch, I'm keenly aware of just how short the memory of the internet is. So it's important to me, and I hope you'll still find it interesting, that we cover um, uh, this event uh, as frequently as reasonable because in a few weeks everyone will have forgotten about this except for our small corner of the internet so we're starting to get some national coverage and i want to go through that but also i want to let you know i will also be covering the disgusting hit piece against league league of legends uh game developer um later today so we'll have something to mix it up if this is getting boring but it is getting pretty spicy last night if you were on my live stream, uh, you saw that we were basically watching live as the story broke on Campus Reform. And since I know that their website is so well respected and um, you know well traded amongst journos, I knew that this was going to get big by the time we woke up today. And sure enough, it has. We've got two new articles in very um, mainstream, uh, well read by many thousands of people websites, the Daily Caller and the Daily Wire. Now, a lot of people are out there saying, hey, get on the show with Shapiro or get on the show with Crowder. I'm happy to hook a brother up. I don't have these guys numbers. <clears throat> so, you know, Papa Shapiro or, uh, or Papa Crowder. I'll let your boy, I'll make time for you anytime. Uh, I think it's important that I'm approaching this from a, from a, hopefully a more measured spot now that I'm just happy it's getting covered. Uh, I know people have personal opinions by about certain writers or certain outlets to me as the victim in all this, it's not relevant. If CNN covered it, I would be happy about it. Although they'd probably say I was the aggressor, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so we've got this article on the Daily Wire. Professor allegedly assaults YouTuber who is slamming, who slams social justice gaming. Now, not a big fan that they used uh, <laughs> my picture because people might think it's uh, it's I'm the uh, professor. And then we've got uh, on the Daily Caller. Uh, feminist professor still at large nearly a week after alleged assault. Uh, also, in case you haven't noticed, uh, I tweeted out, if you're not following me on Twitter, a lot of the updates that are, are, are coming out there, although now that I have retained legal counsel, uh, I can probably only cover things that other cover, other people cover, and I have to be careful about anecdotes. Uh, but um, I shared that this morning, the university where Mr. Matthew Fantastic Lauder had removed him from the website. Now, does that mean he was fired? No, uh, it's probable. It's probable that they're probably not gonna just remove his name and then keep him on staff, especially since I think he was only teaching one class in game design. Uh, again, not a fan of people losing their jobs over their opinions, but that's not what this is about. This is about a violent attack and, and, and a situation that has happened again by his own admission in 2004. A professor who threatened to fight people criticized, who criticized social justice activists allegedly put a well-known YouTuber uh, who slammed identity politics and gaming. I love all this big word, these like fiery words in a headlock and repeatedly punched him on Thursday. As Tony Erickinson, I hope I said that right, of Campus Reform reports, multiple witnesses attest to at, that after Gen Con, an uh, annual gaming conference held in Indianapolis, Professor Matthew Fantastic Lauder, uh, who was scheduled to teach Introduction to Game Design at Quinnipiac, I know I'm saying that wrong, uh, in fall of 2018, uh, grabbed YouTuber Jeremy Hambly from behind at the Tin Roof Bar in Indianapolis, put him in a headlock, repeatedly punched him in the head, yelling, I'm going to effing kill you. That's how I remember it. Solid reporting so far. Ew. Um, witnesses said that Hambly escaped from the headlock. Another customer barred Lauder from pursuing him, uh, prompting Lauder to punch and break the glass at the window at the bar. That's how I remember it as well. The backstory to the alleged incident goes like this. 
Hambly had made a YouTube video slamming Gen Con for hosting social justice activist Anita Sarkeesian. He stated, why would you bring the most toxic, the most divisive person in gaming to the world's biggest gaming convention? I think that's a pretty good take. Roughly a week later, Hambly saw this tweet by Lauder. Real talk, if you had, if uh, problem with feminist frequency, come into Gen Con, fight me, I'm easy to find. Lauder had later deleted his Twitter handle, but Hambly, concerned for his safety, had archived the tweet before he attended Gen Con. Hambly recalled to campus reform at about 2 a.m. Someone came up from behind me, put their arm around my neck, and said, hey, are you Jeremy Hambly? At that moment, I sincerely thought it was a fan from YouTube. Uh, and I turned my head, and Lauder started screaming and punching me, yelling, I'm going to effing kill you. It took four people to pry him off, then he punched the window and ran off. That's, yeah, that's how it happened. That's how it, that's correct. Good reporting. Good reporting, Daily Caller. Hambly, who wound up with a black eye, cuts, and severe bruising, gave a statement to the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department on August 2nd. He said a detective was assigned to the case, which campus reform confirmed. Now, the black eye thing, again, I think started on campus reform. I don't have a black eye. I have a hero eye, a, a woke eye. One of my eyes got woke, all right? Uh, that's okay. Uh, it's helping me see the world just a little bit differently. Um, now we've got the Daily Caller covering it, and feminist professor still at large nearly a week after alleged assault. That's a nice head. That's Rob Shimshock. By the way, Rob Shimshock, thank you, and thank you to Hank Barian um, for covering these, uh, covering this. I think all coverage at this point is good for the cause. Again, the cause is to disavow violence and to get people to just dial back a little bit. Look, I don't care if you're a hippie. I don't care if you're a, a Catholic, whatever. Doesn't matter to me. Just don't punch people, okay? Don't punch people. Don't run them over in your car. Don't do anything like that. You can have a spirited debate, or if you understand that you are incapable of handling that, then you cannot engage. A Connecticut professor alleged allegedly punched a... Oh, somebody sent me a drinking game last night. Every time you read one of these articles and you read the word allegedly, take a shot, but you probably die, so don't do that. Um, punched a YouTube blogger critical of identity politics on August 2nd and shouted, I'm going to effing kill you at him. Professor Matthew Fantastic Lauder pur 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 purportedly... Purportedly assaulted YouTuber Jeremy Hambly and broke the glass window, reported by Campus Reform Wednesday. The incident occurred at Gen Con, outside Gen Con. I don't blame Gen Con. Let me be very clear. I don't blame Gen Con. Um, they have had a slow but measured response to me directly. I'm still giving them time. Hamley put out a video, a YouTube critiquing Gen Con for inviting feminist cultural critic Anita Sarkeesian, who had raked in hundreds of thousands of dollars after complaining about harassment, but has herself been accused of that act. Real talk. If you have a problem. Okay, so we have the tweet. Hamley claims that Lauder approached him at the conference at 2 a.m. at a bar, not at the conference, uh, asked if he was Hamley. Uh, when the defendant stated that he was, in fact... Uh, Jeremy Hambly. He then proceeded to punch the defendant in the, head, in the head while screaming, yes, this is all true. One witness said, according to Hambly's statement, oh, that was from the witness statement. Okay. Took four people to prime off and he punched a window. Yes. Once free of Matt, Jeremy went inside the bar to get away from the attack, heroically, by the way, and Matt got angry and was saying, yeah, run away, pussy, while trying to follow Jeremy to the bar, another witness said. That's true. Uh, once he realized he couldn't get in the bar because I was standing between him and the door, he smashed the window at the bar and then walked away with his friend who wasn't doing anything to stop him from assaulting someone else. That's also true. The guy that was with them didn't do a thing. The YouTuber subsequently filed a police report for non-aggravated uh, assault with the Indianapolis Metro Police Department. The police department detective assigned to Hamley's case did not respond to multiple requests for comment. This is true. Uh, the Indianapolis, uh, but let's we'll give him time. He just called me yesterday. All right. It's very hard to pursue as a man with a day job, said the YouTuber. Um, yeah, that is true. And that that's the issue, right? Like, I actually felt because um, Ethan Van Skyver started that uh, GoFundMe, um, I don't know how much this is going to cost. Probably forty to $50,000 is the numbers I'm hearing. 
but there's almost 15 grand in there. So I was able to retain a lawyer yesterday, a very good lawyer, a team of lawyers, in fact. And I had the money to pay their $10,000 retainer fee. Um, that gets me started. And if that wasn't there, again, as I said in the Twitter video, fuck, I'm so thankful. Um, I don't, I know that there's a huge weight uh, from the community. I feel it, right? That everyone wants justice and everyone wants me to pursue this, especially those in like the comic skate community who, who uh, many of them ha have received horrible threats and things like that and never really prosecuted. Uh, I knew that I had a responsibility to prosecute this, whether or not there was a GoFundMe. I had to do it. I was just like, I won the unlucky lottery. Um, because if we don't set a precedent, uh, then what's to stop the next guy from doing it? This is not just about protecting me. This is about protecting anybody with dissenting opinions who go to conventions. We deserve to feel safe too. Look, I paid my money too. You know how much it cost me to go to Gen Con? $5,000. Okay, between the tickets and the hotel and the travel and the food. And I lost two days of that due to this attack. And not to mention all the lost business meetings that I had with game developers while I was there that I couldn't attend because things were crazy. So this was a huge hit to my business. Uh, and that doesn't even take uh, into account the emotional impact, which call me a cuck if you want, but uh, this has scarred me. Uh, it has made me apprehensive about meeting my fans. It has made me apprehensive about going to more conventions. Now, I'm still going to go because fuck that. I'm not going to be bullied. But I'm not going to have as much fun as I used to, and that's sad. Um, but I'm not going to be bullied by this guy or the idea that another psycho is going to come up. I have to live my life. I have a responsibility to the community to prosecute this, and I'm going to do that. Uh, but... Um, I'm glad that we're seeing some coverage. Uh, I think the Daily Caller and um, and the Daily Wire will just and, and and campus reform. This is just three. I mean, we had Christina Hoff Summers retweeting it. We had Cernovich retweeting it yesterday. I hope that there are hundreds more articles that come out about this because the conversation again needs to be about justice for my attacker. Yes, but the bigger picture is getting people to understand that they need to de-escalate and that. Twitter and, and Facebook are toxic places for people to hang out around other people who basically whip themselves up into a fury, and then you get what you had happen to me. And maybe next time it doesn't end with just some bumps and bruises and, and, and things like that. Maybe someone loses their life.